All right. What book are we in? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> I'm encouraged. I think about I'm enjoying the study. I learn a lot when you study to teach this way. And I've thought a lot of times about just taking this whole study and bringing it to Sunday morning or Sunday night because there's so many people that just, I mean, how often do you get to go through a book almost verse by verse? Uh, uh, it's not done very often uh, in churches today. and uh, But it's Ephesians is a great book. And so we're in chapter 5. We're going to pick up a couple new verses we've, uh, we've not looked at yet. But uh, verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now we've, we've touched on uh, verse 15 several times, and, and I've just sort of given you an overview of, of, of the verse. And, um, but we'll dig into that a little bit more tonight. Then verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And so there's quite a lot in those three verses right there. And uh, so we won't start uh, digging into them. This section is continuing the theme of, uh, we've been talking about that, the uh, chapters 1 through 3. Uh, dealt with what? Um, yeah, I'm almost afraid to ask questions, but um, anybody? We, we, we broke this down into two different parts, one through three and four through six. One through three dealt with what? Our position in Christ. We're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Uh, but then chapters four through six deals with what? The practical side of it. One through three talks about our position. We're seated with Christ in the heavens. But then chapters four through six tells us how to carry that out on this earth that we live in. It's great to be seated with Christ in the heavenlies. And that's true. That's, that, that is a fact. That's a position that we have. We're, it's as if we're already there. But we still live in this evil world that we live in. And um, uh, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The Bible tells us what these days are. And um, so um, we talked about walking circumspectly. Uh, somebody want to take a stab at what that is? I mean, we've talked about it a couple times when we walk circumspectly. Okay, carefully is a very good word, and I'll use that in a little bit. I'm going to dig in a little bit more than what we've, than I've uh, described it in the past. Uh, being aware of our surroundings, very good, yeah. That you walk uh, circumspectly. Uh, Mark said carefully, then that word means carefully, but, but I, I, I put two words together can anybody remember what two words they were circum was what walking it's not walking in a circle but but you, you think of circumference you think of a circle so you walk speckly looking around walk carefully we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit uh, here in a few minutes uh, but living for Christ in this fallen world requires, folks, that we walk circumspectly. Um, uh, it's a word that circumspectly is, uh, I could give you the Greek word, but you'd never remember it, and it doesn't matter if you do or not, but it's translated in different uh, passages of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it's, it's translated to perceive. 
So to walk circumspectly is to perceive the things that are going on around us. Now I'm amazed sometimes at Christians today uh, that can't perceive the days in which we live in. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 10, uh, that word is, is translated to take heed. So to walk circumspectly is to take heed of the things that are happening all around us. In Philippians chapter 3 and Colossians chapter 2, that same word is translated to beware. Um, it'd do us well to beware today of the things that are taking place around us. Would it not? Of course it would. In 2 John, the word is translated to look to. Look to the things that are happening. But there is no way that the evil of this day ought to take us by surprise if we walk circumspectly. Um, uh, it, uh, it, it carries the idea to express an intent. Listen, I intend on looking to the things that are happening around me. Uh, so it's an action that we take. It don't just happen, folks. You better watch your back. Uh, what is it the... The military has, what is the say, saying, watch your six. And what that means is you better look around you to see what's taking on. It means to, uh, to pay attention to something. Um, uh, see that you do it. Take heed to it. Um, uh, so the word see that you walk circumspectly. Circumspectly means carefully. Uh, the expository Bible commentary said it this way, to underline the need for the utmost concentration on leading an irreproachable life. Uh, listen, a, the pastor of a church ought to be above reproach. That's one of the qualifications of of, of the office of a pastor. But I'm tell you what, folks, it's incumbent upon every one of us as Christians to live an irreproachable life. And the only way to do that is to walk circumspectly. It refers back to the previous verses. Um, uh, see then. Uh, then takes us back to verse 13 and 14. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Uh, it's talking about uh, shining a light in this dark world in which we live in. Folks, listen. It is well, I, I preached on Sunday night. Anybody, anybody remember what I preached on Sunday night? I'm putting you on the spot a lot today. Accountability, responsibility. Folks, you and I have a responsibility to shine a light in a dark world. So where am I going to get that light? When you got saved, he moved inside. And we are responsible to shine a light in a dark world. Um, why? why? Why should we shine a light in a dark world? Because men are still lost and without a Savior and need the gospel. Listen, folks, when we shine a light in a dark world, it means that we, we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only thing that will save a soul. So walking circumspectly uh, means that uh, see then, then refers back to shining a light in a dark world. Uh, we're to walk circumspectly for our testimony's sake. If we don't walk circumspectly, we'll, we'll lose our testimony. Uh, circumspectly is the word. It means exactly, accurately. Mark said carefully, and that's right. Uh, it has the idea of diligence and accuracy. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 8, it's translated diligently. Walk diligently in this wicked world in which we live. In Luke 1, 3 and 1 Timothy 5, the word is perfect. And perfect doesn't mean sinless, just means uh, mature. 
Uh, to walk circumspectly is to be diligent in aiming for perfection, in pleasing the Lord and, uh, and avoiding error. I walk circumspectly so that I can avoid error and please the Lord. Everybody want to be pleasing to the Lord, don't you? Then we need to walk circumspectly. It's to pay close attention to living according to God's will expressed in the Bible. Folks, God's got a will for each one of us. He's got a, he's got a general will for all of us. There are certain things that it's the will of God for every Christian. But then God has a specific will too. And he'll reveal it to you through, through the scripture, through his words. Um, uh, to walk circumspectly, folks, means that we measure. How much should we measure by the word of God? Everything. To walk circumspectly means that we measure everything by God's word. I had a buddy one time. Uh, we had a conversation and we were talking about, you know, God's protection, uh, measuring everything by the Word of God, and, and and He made a statement to me that you know, yeah, yeah, only only certain times when we're when we're serving the Lord should we apply these things to our life, and I'm I'm thinking, no, that's not right, folks. To walk circumspectly means we measure everything by God's Word, everything. And um, the verbs see and walk uh, here. See then that you walk. They're present tense verbs. Uh, present tense means that it's a continual action. You don't ever stop. Um, you see verbs, tense. It, we read these things and, and uh, see, then that you, see then that you walk. See, walk. Well, when do we see and when do we walk? They're present tense. We never stop. We never stop doing these things uh, is, is what the tense of that verb means. It's sort of like driving a, a, a car down the road. Um, um, when we drive a car down the road, we've got certain boundaries to keep, right? Yes. Sure. Um, if you're going down the street and there's a one-way road and, and that air is pointing one way, it isn't too smart to go the other end and come up the wrong side of that, is it? No, that's not walking. That's not driving circumspectly. You're going to get in trouble. There are boundaries that, um, that, that we need to, to pay attention to. Uh, there are lines on the road that we need to stay in. They got cars today that you're going down the road. If, if you start slipping over that line a little bit, that thing start beeping at you. Beep, 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 beep. Y'all ever, any y'all ever drove anything like that? Yeah, you rent one today. You can't turn that thing off. <laughs> and I'm always, man, I'm going down the road, that thing's beeping all the way down. I drove 700 miles from New Mexico to California, and that thing beeped all the way. Like that drove me crazy. <laughs> uh, but you get to go. We've got boundaries, folks, as Christians, that we need to stay in. They're boundaries that we must pay attention to. It means observing all the signs. Um, <laughs> you go down the 290. And there's a couple of those off ramps that you get on. Miller's Port, I think, is one of them. Uh, if you're going um, down the 290 and you go to get off on uh, the Niagara Falls Boulevard, you come up under, there's a big curve right there, right? Y'all know where I'm talking about? What's that sign say? Speed limit. It's 20 miles an hour. It's 20 or 25. It's slow. I was going down through there one day and there was an 18-wheeler on its side. He tried to take that curve too fast. I got a call from Esther one morning, early in the morning. She was on her way to work. And she said, Dad, I'm in the ditch. I said, Esther, where you at? And she told me. And so I was at, it's that it's off-ramp right there uh, at Millersport. And I think it says 20 or 25. And she said, I thought that was just a suggestion. 
she spun off. You couldn't even see her car from the road. It was way down in the ditch. She hadn't been driving long, and, uh, and she would, she'd shoot me if she knew I just, so y'all don't, <laughs> y'all don't tell that story, all right? Jack, don't you tell that story. <laughs> don't tell her I told it. Uh, I thought it was a, no, it's not a suggestion. We laugh, but folks, that's the way Christian life is. Well, that's what walking circumspectly means, that we stay in the boundaries that God has put there for us. Uh, those signs on the road uh, are there uh, to remind us of the dangers. You ever, you ever seen a, a tractor trailer truck try to go under a, uh, a bridge and it's a low bridge? Mark, you've probably seen it a lot. And, uh, well, before you got there, there was a sign that told you how high that bridge was. And you ought to know how high your vehicle is. Don't try to go under the bridge. That's walking circumstance. There, those signs are there to warn us of the dangers. Um, to walk circumspectly is to keep our life in the center of God's will. Constantly testing everything by the word of God. That word circumspect, walking circumspect, that means a lot in the Christian life, folks. Uh, to walk circumspectly is to have on the whole armor of God. We'll look at that if we ever get to chapter 6. But it means that we put on the whole armor of God and engage in spiritual warfare. And we are in a spiritual battle today. Uh, see then that you walk circumspectly. Then he says, not as fools, but as wise. Uh, so to walk circumspectly is to refuse to walk foolishly. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> taking at the fact here, you know, who's Paul talking to here? He's talking to Christians. Walk circumspectly. Not as fools. Now, he didn't call them fools. He said, but you Christians don't walk like a bunch of fools. Walk circumspectly. Uh, before salvation, folks, we didn't have any. We didn't have, listen, we just walked as fools before we got saved spiritually. And uh, uh, we acted foolishly. Uh, our understanding is darkened. The heart is, uh, is blind. We looked at that in Ephesians 4 and 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, <coughs> excuse me, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Paul said, don't walk like that. I mean, we talked about a few minutes ago, we got the light that, lit, that shines inside of us. That's the way we should walk. Uh, the unsaved, uh, they don't believe God's word. They don't walk circumspectly. They don't have God's spirit inside of them. You know, folks, really, we could say it like this. Uh, the, the child of God has no business walking as a fool. Now, sometimes we do. But look, we got the spirit of God living in us. When we walk as fools do, the spirit of God convicts us, tries to right the ship, get us turn around and go the other way. Uh, we have that inside of us. Um, we've been made alive. We talked about the new man. Uh, walk circumspectly, not as fools. Why? Because we're a new man. We're a new creature. Uh, God has uh, breathed spiritual life